Welcome back, Devils fans, and the season of torment for us continues. The New Jersey Devils go to Long Island and absolutely drown the Islanders by a score of four to nothing. And guys, oh, how could I forget? Cheers. Cheers to my Devils fans. It's been a long Sunday afternoon for your boy. He's just been here imbibing in some beverages, watching the game. What an absolutely beautiful game it was. Shout out to our sponsors, Jack Daniels. You can see I'm making some progress here. This bottle's almost done. Next game, we will polish her off and add her to the graveyard of Jack Daniels bottles. And what an absolute 360-degree turnaround from what we saw last night in that absolutely abysmal loss to the Ottawa Senators. And <clears throat> as I've said to you guys all before and we've all talked about, this New Jersey Devils team has been consistently inconsistent, and it's painful to watch because the highs and the the highs and lows they've brought us on throughout the year, and on any given night they were capable of beating anybody, and on any given night they were capable of losing to anybody, and it's like maddening to see the effort we put forth at home last night against a basement dweller in the Ottawa Senators, and then we go on the road to the island today in a game that the Islanders desperately needed to win, and we just shit-kicked them. And it's completely infuriating and maddening just to see the tale of the two teams. They have bipolar, um, different identities, multiple personality syndrome for this Devils club. And what a friggin' win we put on the island tonight. Jack Hughes' 300th NHL career game. Alexander Holtz's 100th NHL career game. Where does the time go? These kids grow up so fast. And as I've preached time and time again... Nucleus's age and players fizzle out and, and move on very quickly. I mean, 300 NHL games for Jack, and he's missed a shitload of time. So, you know, Jack Hughes is, is no longer, you know, the new kid on the block. He's 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 been around for a minute now, and he's been in the playoffs one time. One time against the New York Rangers, a beautiful series it was to beat those losers in seven games before Carolina handled us last season. But... Uh, wild game on the island. I, I can't say I would have anticipated this. Shout out to Capo Kakinen, just absolutely with a dominant performance. Absolutely dominant performance. And this guy, basically, I feel bad for him. You know, Fitzgerald came out to the world and said, we made the deal just to get rid of VTech. You know, this guy doesn't have a contract for next season, and he's looking for a job. I mean, he played a pretty decent game against the Rangers at the Garden, the last, the last matchup that we lost. He didn't really get any help. And he... Had an absolute gem tonight in Long Island. And, you know, I, I'm curious to see how how we divide the starts for the rest of the season between Allen and him. Um, you know, as everyone knows, it's a complete Hail Mary hope and a prayer to make the playoffs at this point. But it, it just makes it that much more maddening that had we won last night, we would have closed in on Detroit, and then with the win today, you know, and that, uh, if we had won last night, I don't even know what this video tonight would be, honestly. I really don't know. At that point, we would have won four in a row. The gap would be, I believe, three points. And, yeah, it's just every golden opportunity we had, the team shit the bed and, and couldn't get the job done. But, you know, tonight, again, they looked like another team. They did not look like the team we saw last night. And... um you know, it was great to see. And hopefully if we could somehow win out, then you never know. You never know what happens. I, my Everyone knows where I stand. I've come to grips with the reality of the season a couple weeks back after many glorious chances were provided to us and we failed to capitalize. But, you know, this team is just it just really takes us on a roller coaster the whole friggin' season. It's like just, you know, get it over with. Just start losing every game because why you just keep – keep us dangling here on a string but um fairly uneventful first period the devils had a five on three that didn't materialize anything and then after the under guy the first penalty came out of the box it was a five on four and we draw another penalty to end the period basically heading into the second period on a five on three um and that's when you know. Timo Meyer. You guys know uh, I'm the president of the 
Timo Defender Club. Been rooting for my man. And on the on the five on three, 38 seconds into the second period, Timo just right there, right in front where he makes his money. Why we traded for him, why we paid him. Just right there, just right there in the crease, parked up with that big body of his. Tips it right in from the Brothers Hughes, Jack and Luke with the assist. Timo gets his 23rd on the power play at 38 seconds. A beautiful goal to give the Devils the one nothing lead. And a little under two and a half minutes later at 2.57, Jack just comes flying in down the wing off a little pass from Timo. Looks like an innocent play. Jack gets the legs moving, and then he just rips one on net that finds its way into the back of the net, giving the Devils the 2 nothing lead at 2.57. Jack's 24th from Timo Meyer and Jesper Bratt. And then a few minutes later at 6.12. Free Holtz! Alexander Holtz on a nice feed from Shimo Nemitz. Blasts one into the back of the net, giving the Devils the 3-0 lead at the 6-12 marker. Devils up 3-0, and that is how the second period ends. And let's just talk about what else happened in the second period. Anders Lee, a victim of a Brendan Smith smackdown earlier in the season at the Rock, if you guys remember. Anders Lee... Was getting testy. My man Brendan Smith dumped him with a nice check. And then a couple seconds later, trailing on the boards, coming the other way. Anders Lee comes across and tries to catch him. Brendan Smith drops his shoulder, dumps Anders Lee again. Anders Lee gets up. He wants all the smoke, takes the gloves off. And my man Brendan Smith just feeds him a steady die to uppercuts and overhands. Even with the visor on, Brendan Smith just puts the beats on him, leaving him leaking in blood. An image I'll never forget from the season. The night that Brendan Smith solidified his place in my heart, personally. You guys know, I always have a soft spot for the tough guys and the guys that are willing to engage in the fisticuffs. And on that night, I said, you know what? I don't give a shit if, if Brendan Smith takes some stupid penalties and makes some terrible plays. My man has heart. And he fed Anders Lee just... Mm, mm, uppercuts, blood everywhere. Beautiful sight. Anders Lee skates off. Trying to pump up his team with blood leaking down his face. Brendan Smith absolutely beat the shit out of him. One of my favorite moments from the season. But anyway, Anders Lee has a kind of dirty knee on knee, knee on thigh situation on Nico Heeshier. And Timo was on the ice. And you don't do that to a fellow Swiss. You don't do that to his captain. And my man Timo came over, dropped the gloves. It wasn't a great fight. Timo kind of lost his balance. It was rather a shitty fight. But in the end, in that second period, my man, Timo Meyer completed the Gordie Howe hat, hat trick. And for those of you that are not familiar with what a Gordie Howe hat trick is, the Gordie Howe hat trick is getting a goal, an assist, and a fight within the same game. There's not many players in the entire league that have the capability of doing all three things in the same game because there's tons of guys that will never fight. And a lot of the guys that fight, it's so, you know, so uh, unlikely for them to get a goal and an assist in a game where they have a fight. So you do not see too many Gordie Howe hat tricks. And Timo got one tonight. And in honor of the the beautiful Gordie Howe hat trick by Mr. Timo Meyer tonight, run it. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Cheers to my man Timo Meyer. Letting his balls hang out in that second period. Dropping the mitts. No questions asked. Taking Anders Lee to task after a cheap knee on Nico Heeshier. And you love to see it. Timo Meyer, obviously everyone knows. I've defended my man. I've told you all. He was playing through an injury after he came back from injury. He was being misuti misutilized on the left side. He was starved of power play time. Travis Green comes in, relief of Lindy Ruff, puts him on the right side, gives him power play time, and it's just paid dividends. He leads the league in goals in March. He looks like a different player, and we have this man for seven more years after this. He is going to make up a main piece of our nucleus and our offense for years to come. He is the grittiest and ballsiest player on our team overall that we have, and we need to get some guys that have half the guts he has. Our whole team, unfortunately is finesse speed skater types and he will put his head down and get down and dirty in the corners in the crease he'll do what he has to do and nothing 
personifies the warrior that Timo Meyer is more than this very night where he got his, I believe, first career and 100% first as a New Jersey Devil. Gordie Howe hat trick. Hats off to you, Mr. Timo Meyer, for the Gordie Howe in beautiful fashion in the second period. And and it's a damn shame that, you know, aside from I keep I, I, I hate to keep beating the dead horse, but the reality is this team, if we just had a friggin' goalie from months ago, we'd be in the playoffs. And it's unfortunate to see it even again tonight. Like, even Kakinen is providing in his two starts much better goaltending than the trio we had earlier in the year. So Fitz does nothing all season long, and then on deadline day he gets two goalies. And then he tells the world that one of them didn't want to come here and Jake Allen, that he refused to wave his no trade. That's a whole bullshit spin campaign in my opinion. I don't know all the ins and outs of that, but I think it's a bunch of nonsense. And and Kakinen, he gets two guys on deadline day. Like just you could have got either one of them or one of many other, you know, capable NHL goalies. In January or February, we'd be in the playoffs. And furthermore, it goes to show that who knows what the season would have looked like if Timo Meyer was used appropriately, and he wasn't. He was on the left wing instead of the right wing. He wasn't. He was getting mop up power play time at best. You know, the last twenty seconds, twenty five seconds after Jack's unit came off, and it's a damn shame. It's a damn shame. Fitzgerald has blood all over his hands for his inactivity until deadline day. Completely pathetic, and it, it makes me even more mad at Fitz. Honestly, that you know you decided to be a seller on deadline day. Imagine if we had Toffoli since deadline day. I mean, that could have made the difference in a game or two. And we're right there. And it's unfortunate. In the end, we're probably going to miss the playoffs and not miss it by a huge margin. And having Tyler Toffoli for the stretch would have been, you know, very important to the team morale and and the production he was providing. He was leading the team in goals when we traded him. And so it just makes me hate Fitz even more because you do see flashes of, you know, we've won three of the last four. Um, Competent goaltending obviously helps. And we're doing this without who was our leading goal scorer when we traded him in Tyler Toffoli. And it's just a very unfortunate scenario. And, you know, it's it just not a good look for Fitz. The fact that he waited entirely too long to do anything to save the sinking ship when it was very obvious that at, at a minimum, I will say, I'll be the first to say, the team has a lot of glaring issues. But it to me, it started with the goaltending. And had he had just gotten a goaltender much earlier this team would be in, in a much different position than we are right now, and we'd be in the playoffs. And, again, I've seen a lot of debates on other channels and articles and these things. I will go on record as saying I hate tanking. I will never say tank for this guy. or t I despise tanking. I think it's a complete joke. I think it sends the entirely wrong message to the fan base and the current players. Players want to win the fucking game, even if, if our season is – seemingly out the window they do not want to lose they are competitive dudes and they want to win that is how they got to the nhl they didn't just land here by accident and so when i hear people talk about tanking this and that i think that's a bunch of nonsense i have no interest in tanking i want to try to win every single freaking game i don't care about getting a higher draft pick and it's all nonsense and so i am on the record saying a 100 times out of 100 i would much prefer to make the playoffs and take my chances versus tanking or not making the playoffs with the silver lining uh your loser mentality of oh we got a higher draft pick this that and the other thing i have no interest i want to make the playoffs every season i don't give a shit about getting a higher draft pick and that's the mentality the organization should have the players don't give a shit about higher draft picks they want to make the playoffs and see what they could do and we were you know it's going to be proven when the season comes to an end that we're going to just narrowly miss and had we had done anything proactively instead of waiting till deadline day, we'd be in the postseason dance and we were deprived of that because of Tom Fitzgerald's inactivity. But tonight just goes to show you that with decent goaltending and when the team doesn't play like ass, we're a deadly team. But everyone knows, again, the Devils this season, consistently inconsistent. We could beat anyone and we could lose to anyone. Um, and that's just the way it goes. Uh, Devils up 3 nothing after 2. I just went on a diatribe. My apologies. A couple rants. We got the jack flowing. And then with the empty net, Tierney deposits one for his third of the season at 19.53. Devils win 4 nothing. Timo with the Gordie Howe. Jack Hughes with two points. Capo Kakinen with the shutout. I mean, it, it's just, you know, you love to see it. And, um... 
let me just reload here make sure that uh you know they change these stats a lot so between between when i first look at them and make my notes uh a lot of times in the next 10 20 minutes things get changed so if you've ever noticed in the video that i say a stat that doesn't match up with the screen i, I meant to put a disclaimer about that the nhl changes them and things get edited and then by then it's too late for me to change it but whatever um Yeah, what a punk Anders Lee is. Let's look at the game stats. Devils with 30 shots on goal, 37 shots on goal for the Islanders. All were stopped by Kakinen. Face-off percentage, Devils with the advantage, 56.1% to 43.9% for the Islanders. Devils 1 for 4 on the power play, and the Islanders 0 for 5 on the power play. Devils with 13 hits, Islanders with 20 hits. Devils with 16 block shots. Islanders with 24 block shots. Oh, and shout out to my man, Nicky D. Nick D. Simone on a late or midway through the third period power play for the Islanders. He he blocked another shot and just ate that shit. And you can see he was laboring and it stung him. And Nick D. Simone, he's uh he's got a lot of built up goodwill in my book. I you know I would give him a look going into next season. I don't want to shit on guys, but I have already said on this channel that I am ready to move on from both John Marino and Siegenthaler. Uh, with that being said, it seems that, you know, etched in stone for me uh, going into next season would be Luke Hughes, Dougie Hamilton, Shimo Nemitz, and Kevin Ball due to his size. A lot of people have been down on Ball. He is a big body. They are rare to find. I think he just needs to develop some of that nastiness and positioning and ways to use his body and throw his weight around because he's a huge man. He just needs to get that nasty streak, use his body, and, you know, he could be lethal. He showed a little – there was a little skirmish after one of the whistles late in the third and he was shoving somebody. But I, I would like to see him get much nastier, much more physical, much more aggressive, and don't let that big body go to waste. But shout-out to DeSimone, a huge shot block. Um, and, you know, he, you could tell he was wearing it. It definitely hurt him. Devils with two giveaways. The Islanders with 13. The – Devils with four takeaways and the Islanders with seven. And what a great game on the island. What a game for this New Jersey Devils team. I also think it's kind of weird. Um, you know, we recalled Poulter, and it's like the games that Allen's not going to play, he can't even be on the bench. I'm not sure what the hell that is. I don't know that I could recall anything like this in the past. We did this, you know, a week or so ago. It's like if Allen's not playing, he just – doesn't dress and then we call up a goalie from the ahl kind of bizarre uh i thought when i first heard that we might see polter get a start and i i would like to see polter get a start if and when we become mathematically eliminated i think you know that's the time you give a guy like polter a start just to see what he has um i would also give jeremy Brodeur a start honestly if we're mathematically eliminated which you know probably wouldn't come till much closer to the end of the season and hopefully somehow we could win out and get some help from other teams and still get in this thing but like I said, I've come to grips with the fact that that is not reality. And one of my favorite parts, we go to the three stars of the game. The third star from the Devils, number 86, with a goal and an assist, Jack Hughes. And the second star from the Devils, with a goal and an assist, and a fight, a two-point night, and the Gordy Howe hat trick, number 28. Timo fucking Meyer. The March of Meyer. His domination continues. Love to see it. And as always, for all the people hating on Timo earlier in the season, deposit. Your apologies in the comments. I repeat, for the Timo detractors, deposit your apologies in the comments. And the first star of the game, also from the Devils, number 31 with a 37 save shutout, Capo Kakinen. What a performance. He had some insane saves tonight. I can't speak highly enough of his game tonight. He was the difference. And this is what you see when when the Devils get 
average to above average NHL goaltending. The team just plays differently when we're chasing. Oh, and also shout out, shout out to the Devils for not allowing the first goal tonight. I'm sorry. So two, we we bucked two trends tonight. We bucked the trend of obviously we give up the first goal way more than we score the first goal. So we scored first tonight. So we bucked that trend, and we also bucked the trend of taking that fat L on the second game of a back to back. And so it's nice to see, you know, two things that historically have gone against us went our way tonight. We scored first, and we did win the second game of a back-to-back. Super rare. Um, but overall, great team win. Hopefully they can keep the good vibes going, and we just continue rolling on. That's all. All we could do is just try to win our games. We can't control everyone else, but we could win our games. Great team win for the boys tonight. Great goaltending performance. Timo Meyer just continues the tear that is the March Madness of Timo Meyer. Jack with two points. Yeah, you just love to see it. Great win. Good vibes. What a Sunday. What a Sunday. Let me know what you thought about the game in the comments. Let me know what you thought about Timo's Gordie Howe hat trick. Let me know what you thought about Kakinen. Do you want to see Kakinen come back next year? A few weeks back, I said I thought you know we might see the Jake Allen Kakinen duo for next year. Um, it fits his big game hunting. Doesn't come back with a trophy kill. I still don't believe that it's going to happen, but at least Jake Allen and Kakinen or Jake Allen and Dawes, Jake Allen and Schmid give us a, a better chance than what we saw this year. I do hope he does indeed get the goalie that he claims he was going to get. I would love to see any of the rumored big names for, you know, Soros is number one on my list, but I do not believe the analytics department will approve a Soros deal because of what he ultimately would get paid when his contract is up, and I just can't see it happening. I just can't. I just can't. I think it's Markstrom at best for us in the summer. And I'll tell you what, a, a duo of Markstrom with Jake Allen as the backup would be a phenomenal goaltending duo. And then with a couple other right pieces, a couple gritty forwards brought in, a couple stay-at-home gritty defensemen, this team this team has showed signs. It's just we've been inconsistent. But you do see the signs. That's why, to me, this is going to go down as one of the most frustrating Devils teams of all time. Because, you know, there's been years where we sucked – over the past decade, you know, longtime fans know that we sucked, and it's just like we suck, and, you know, that's it. You still root for the boys. You still watch it. You still love the game. You still love the team. But, you know, they're like, oh, this team sucks. The difference with this team is they showed on nights that they could look they could look great. They could look elite almost on certain nights. And then they have the nights where they're like, this is a fucking lottery team. You're the worst team in the league. Like, how are you letting Ottawa do this to you? And, and that's, to me, the most frustrating part of this season – is that, yeah, it's just so wildly up and down and inconsistent where it's like you we are better than what our record shows, but you are, you know, you are what your record is. And, and it's unfortunate. A lot of squandered opportunity. We wasted a year of the nucleus, and it really blows. And, you know, once the season's really over in, in, in two and a half weeks or whatever it is, I will go through a clinical depression. And me and my friend Jack Daniels will ride on into the night. But let me know what you thought of the game in the comments. Anything else, Devils Hockey, throw it out there. Love talking to you all. Riding high, big win. Cheers, Devils fans. Big win. Kokkinen was the man. Shut the door tonight. Big Devils win. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. Until next time, friends, let's go Devils.